definitely like black. No, no question. No question about that. Moving on. Let's go to Einar against Bray Jensen against Thorfinnsson. So Einar is down to 13 minutes, but 19 moves. We still have to make. Um, we left the game at uh, 17. Bishop takes c6. When black played rook d8. White uh, made preparations for the end game with king f2. Black counter attacked the bishop with rook b6. Bishop went back. The knight retreated. White played c3. A nice solid move. He wants to keep the black knight this one out of d4. Now I can also think about uh, spending on the king side with g4 at some point. But overall a nice solid move, positional move. b6 was played. Bishop c2. And bishop to f8. Right now, white looks more solid, it has to be said. I think he might think about g4 here, why not? G4 and did you play it already? No, he's thinking here. Yeah, I'm thinking G4 and uh, I want to put an eye on C4. Where does the knight go? Really? Where does the knight go? What does the fox say? What does the fox say? 92. I'm, I'm, I'm getting some ideas here from uh, a pawn structure like this you might get from uh, the polar bear system, you know, uh, the Leningrad with colors reversed. Uh, I've had this ending several times. I mean, not, not exactly this, but uh, similar structure. And then with another C4, if you get another C4, it looks quite nice because then you can uh, develop this guy. Yeah, I like, I like that here. I like G4. I like G4, but he played B3. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean he wants to do something with his bishop, but at the moment this guy is attacked with the rook, or by the rook. Uh, so he played b3. Yeah, maybe bishop a3 he wants to play, uh, and rook d1, but long term I like this knight on c4. We can also jump to, to e4 in some, in some cases and there are some weak squares here. I think white must be for choice here, yeah, definitely. Looks more solid for white and since the position is uh, somewhat simplified I don't think uh, white should have any problems with this, with this time, this current time situation. Okay, okay, I, th I think the stream is okay, it's just that I have to connect this computer to the other network as well. Because I have another computer where I answer the, the chat. Check out. So we need to get this one online as well. 2RB833EE, can't any more. Five, three. Strapping of decision. 3BB. Seven nine eight five zero. I'm just kidding. Windows was unable to connect. No, 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 no. Did I tap that incorrectly? Copper box connect. Oh crap! I'm holy, holy crap! I'm holy. Okay, security key. Try it again. Let's try it again. J? J? Sarah J? 
Rachel? JC? No, the letter J, come on. Okay. Now I have two. Two, uh. Two networks. Yeah, I also need this computer because I get my live games here, so we can't be having breakups. So I'm back, fortunately. No. Where do I do? So yeah, uh, are blacks doubled a pawns a significant weakness in this position? Um, well, weaknesses you need to attack, but the thing is, it's more important that you lose your flexibility. Uh, you no longer have a b pawn, and that, that means that white can post up on this c4 square. So this weakens some squares, like c4 square, and. Yeah, it just gives white more freedom, uh, weakens black's position on the queen side. It's not so much that uh, the pawns can't be attacked, it's more that they weaken the squares that they can no longer control. So I think this is the reason why white is slightly better in this position. So moving on, this one is, oh yeah, let's go to. Stefansson Peterson. Stefansson against Gatterson. Oh, we have a bunch of moves. A bunch of moves. And let's see. Queen to b2. D takes on c4. Of plate. Put on b7. Uh, you want to do that because otherwise black takes on d2 and there's always checks to worry about. Knight takes on c4. Queen jump to f3, attacking the knight, posting the queen up on a nice square in the enemy camp. Knight on c move to e3. And whoa! Hang on a minute! Hang on a minute! Black went berserk here with red takes e3. What's going on here? We have to see that. Knight takes e3, yeah. And knight e4. I'm confused. Maybe he thought that he could take. And there's going to be hanging bishop here on c3, but... If we take and maybe flick in this move, right? And it's not... As much of a problem. And why this up the exchange? Okay, maybe but it's not something you want. So maybe rook takes e3, I don't know. Knight four. I have a feeling this was not necessary. Rook a to e1. And now if knight takes f2, uh, take with the queen. And there are no problems, it seems to me. So, what can black do here? I mean, we can threaten mate here. This might have been one of the ideas. This is quite an annoying threat. He said t7, brain fort. Death by brain fort. Knight it's really checkmate. Uh, but, okay, I mean, knight c2 is too passive. But maybe you can just do something like this. H4, there's no more mate. Oh, okay, there's also, you can go back also and not have to worry about taking on g3. Yeah, I mean, okay, practically it's maybe not very easy, but there is a reason why. Why, yeah. Uh, and this is called robot and. It doesn't make many mistakes in such positions. Tends to find the best moves. Know where the p will know where the pieces are supposed to be put. And yeah, okay. To e1, black is thinking. So what does it do from here? Um, yeah, 
The only idea seems to be 95. Uh, let's say it's warm. I mean, this doesn't make much sense now, so maybe here. But is it is it is the threat even? If I just go here. Yeah, well, maybe now, but. Uh, Yeah, this is the only idea I see in 95. But it doesn't... Well, there, uh, there are some annoying things to be 94 back. What happens? Let's... Uh, let's try some moves. King H2. Yeah, the problem is if you take on e3, attack the queen. They're not check, you can't take on e3. So maybe you're not throwing anything, you just go king h2. And you don't have enough pieces. I mean, these pieces are not from the king, so... Also, bishop takes e3, uh, rook takes e3, and now we're attacking this guy. So everything seems... to hold here for white. Uh, So why did he go rook takes e3? I mean, his position looked fine, so maybe he just uh, overruled something. Yeah, that's also... Uh, yeah, one point from cylinder. Uh, you can also stop everything with bishop to d4. That's a good point. And then what? Yeah, I agree. So, looks like had to get over ambitious here. In a good position. Uh, if you can't find anything here, then it's just close to lost. Okay, but things will be happening faster now because we're moving closer to the time control. Uh, let's have a look at Henrik, which uh, looks to have a safe uh, endgame match. Let's see what happened in that game. The last move was uh, bishop e2, and we had a number of moves since then. Playing quite fast here, uh, Henry really tends to play quite fast. G7. So now we might be threatening to take on d5, but white played bishop b5, ignored it, now takes d5. Takes seven, and yeah, this is probably a good exchange for White because he uh, increases the scope of his bishops, and now maybe he has a weakness that he can attack with the White Squared Bishop finally. And you can imagine in the future that if he can push the Queen's side pawns, he can use his bishop pair. Mm, knight to d3. Bishop to d3. Want to keep the bishop on d5. Bishop to d4. Knight into e4. And now white gave off the bishop pair. Bishop takes e4. Pawn took on e4. And rook c4. So now we have transformation in the pawn structure. Um, I think I like it for white because he can uh, 
more or less control the black pawns here on the king's side. His, his king is good. Like king e2, which, oh, yeah, he played, okay. And in the future, white will be able to create a pass pawn on the queen side, which could become significant. You can easily push here and push the b pawn, play a6, and maybe even push the pawn to a7. Uh, what can black do in the meantime? I mean, okay, this pawn is pinned. So you can't play this. So it takes uh, a lot more time for black to do anything constructive here. You play king f7. King jump to uh, e3. And he wants black to play f5. I mean, okay, more the bishop than this is attack, so black went for f5. But with f5, you lose. Uh, you lose flexibility with your pawn structure. Now you can no longer play g5, try and create the weakness and get a pass pawn on the h file. So now it just looks to me like white will be create be able to create a pass pawn on the queen side. Rook c8, rook e8, rook c4. Oops, rook c4, rook e7. So white repeated moves once here, just. Getting closer to the time control in bishop e6. Yeah, and my question is can uh, black do anything about this simple plan? I'll play b4 and play a5. I'll play b5, a6, a7. With a pass pawn on a7. Surely the position is, is too difficult for black there. Uh, so I think. Possibly the computer just doesn't understand how drastic the situation is. Or maybe I'm too optimistic, but to me this looks quite good for white. So yeah, like, like I said earlier, I mean... Henrik excels in the endgame and it just seems like he has managed to outplay black here. And I think this exchange of the d pawn for the a pawn was, was instructive because that enabled white to get a pawn majority on the queen side. And we'll see if he can convert, but I like it for, for white. So let's. Uh, Go back another, another circle in, uh, in our overview. We always start with uh, Kjartansson Stenkrimson. So let's find this game. So we left it as a rook d4 and I managed to protect the move, bishop f8, didn't really see anything else, knight d5, queen c5, okay, this is attacked, so c3, knight c6, trying to regroup, and rook d3. So initially, black played queen b6, which meant that he wanted to exchange queens, so... I guess he's gonna take an e3 here. And that was his idea with knight c6. So black must feel that the... Uh, the end game is slightly better for him, or well, at least equal. And once you get the queens off, black doesn't really have to worry about any big attack on the king side, so you can start thinking about being better. And yeah, right now we can see that immediately e pawn could become a, a source of concern for white. But black didn't take it, but actually bishop g7. Yeah, the bishop belongs there eventually, but I thought he would keep it on f8 for a while. Just to keep an eye on this d6 pawn. It 
So now white can take on c5, uh, initiate the trade on his own terms, but the black will take with a pawn. Well, maybe maybe with a knight, yeah, I'm sorry. Take, take the tax of rook, and then we take on, on, on e4. So white's not going to do that. Mm. Difficult position. It might even be, I don't know. For me, it seems easier to find find moves for black. For white, it's uh, it's not so easy. It's not clear where the pieces go and what our plan is. Like we talked about before, I don't know. Not complex, so maybe the situation is, is reflected in uh, in the current time situation. Come it down to eight minutes against fifteen for for here then and. Yeah, still a lot of moves to play, 80 moves. Uh, so we're nearing the time trouble phase, so I'm going to take a short break. Not more than 5 minutes, 3 to 5 minutes, and then we'll come back for the, for the time trouble phase.
Jambalaya. Hmm. Where to go, what to do. He said G7. White actually went. Queen T2 here? For some reason. This E pawn. And then he went. Bishop E3. Queen is all move to a5. Hmm. So, what is giving up a pawn, but... Where's the compensation exactly? Um, I don't know. Okay, I mean, long term, this might be weak, but. Maybe the position was al already difficult. I don't quite understand it, I don't know. No, yeah. It looks like he went wrong here. Now he played knight d5. <clears throat> And here black should play bishop f5 and he stands better if he, if he uh, plays something else. What well, might be good here, but bishop f5 seems like a good move. Yeah, I don't understand why it's played. It seemed like he didn't have to give up his pawn for, well, virtually nothing. Maybe he had, uh, I mean... Something like this in mind. But maybe he overlooked rook takes g4. I'm, I'm not sure this works, but it looks to me like this is working. And the main point is that h, h1 will hang. Once, yeah, bishop takes on pins, but take on h1, and then we can take on f5 and we're in one piece. So this might be what overlooked here and he has played bishop f5 already so possible uh, possible blunted by white here quite possibly a blunder here um, yeah but let's, let's move quickly here between between games because things are starting to happen Time to face. <clears throat> so we left uh, Thurston against Kjervar after uh, this bishop f6. Nice uh, positional idea. White went queen c2, and of course bishop c5. Knight e2, trying to control the square finally with a knight. Uh, where, where am I? Knight 2 queen e7. And to increase the influence on the weakened black squares, b3, knight back to b6, rook to f1, maybe thinking about f4 himself, uh, yeah, no, hardly, rook c8, queen d3, finally took on c1, the rook took, knight back to d7, and yeah, I might jump to c5. Might think about maneuvering this knight somewhere. Uh, rook after d1. This is attacked, so knight d to c5. 
Queen all the way back to b1, g5, and that's the current position. Definitely looks like black is for choice. I mean, uh, he's better, but it's it's uh, it's not critical or something. Um, can we play like on the king side? Maybe maybe it's too early for act to play like like h5. Yeah, we'd like to put, put another f4 at some point, but at the moment, white would uh, chop it off. But still, it's always possible. You can imagine a scenario like, okay, let's say, I'm not saying it's a good move here, but it's white to move, actually, yeah. Uh, it's white to move, actually. But he played, played queen g5. What if he played something like queen f6, and the idea is, well, what does white do? I mean, b4 just creates more weaknesses. But my idea was to jump with the knight on f4, so black to move again. Maybe even take with a pawn, okay. Might not be the best, but my idea is to jump to e5 with the knight. Which stands quite nicely, but... Maybe it's hard to go from there. But uh, yeah, I think it's positionally desirable for black. But he wants to go into g5. <laughs> we can also just uh, okay again making black to move if you go now for takes we can also, also just take with the queen then uh, go back with the queen and then put, put an iron f4 that's also one idea overall it looks better for black for sure let's move on Let's go to Priyana. We have a lot of moves there, actually. So 22, b3. Priyana with a5. Knight to d2. Yeah, we talked about this earlier. You want to jump with the knight to c4 if you can. So that's why, yeah, that's why black played a5 and bishop a6. He does not want to allow this knight to settle on c4. g4, finally. What we wanted, knight e7. And now let's see four. Yeah. Okay, I mean we can also jump to e4, but he felt like okay, black must take, which he did. Maybe he felt like these pawns would give him some good control over a lot of squares. So now trying to make this knight bad. He can't go to d5, can't go to f5. And if you go to c6, we're also controlling b4 and d4. So a4 was played here. Yeah, it is. We can't take because well, d3 probably, but can we play what? e3 then? I'm confused. Why not here? It didn't take it. Uh, yeah, he took it. Of course, he took it. Ainer is a notorious pawn grabber, like I said, so of course, he took it. Let's see, six. Yeah, I didn't get concrete reason to take it, so d3. It's just trying to create a square for it. get some activity and attack this pawn. But for sure, white is for choice here. White takes d1. <coughs> Bishop takes d1. Knight a5 attacking this pawn, which Ainer of course protects. Bishop e7. And g5. Uh, preventing counterplay with f6. Yeah, now actually. All the black pieces are quite bad, so. This is starting to look quite good for, for white, and I think he will, next step is, okay, we want to move this bishop somewhere, but we can't allow this rook to b2, so he'll bring his king here to, uh, to c2. And from there he can move his bishop, and once he moves the bishop, 
can uh, he can move the knight. Uh, I mean the rook. And yeah, then it's just a question if if he can break through. So, oh, look, so I'm looking at that. Look, we're Okay. So yeah, looking good for 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 Einar here. Uh, yeah, Brian King of eight, and they both have. Uh, Einar has six minutes. Brian eight minutes. Still nine moves to make, but there's plenty of time actually. So now the question is simply if. Uh, if black can hold, um, I mean technically there are no pawn breaks, so maybe uh, this extra pawn isn't isn't so important. But the main thing is it, it's restri restricting black's pieces. But can white attack anything? Uh, that's a big question, and remains to be seen. Okay, <clears throat> once he executes this plan. Of bringing the king, okay. He went bishop d3, so maybe he wants to bring the king directly like this. And once he executes the plan of putting the king on c2, he can start thinking about pushing the h pawn. And then we either create a weakness or an open file for the rook to penetrate. So, yeah, why this better? The only question is, is good enough to win? I think it might be, so not looking good for Bray here. So let's go to uh, Gretason. Uh, Stefansson against Gretason. Anders against Helgi. So what happened here? Uh, move 22, rook a to e1. He actually went bishop f8. Which means that he just overlooked something. I mean, you're not going to sacrifice the uh, exchange and then back up with your bishop to f8. But okay. Bishop d4. Rook to c6. Okay, you want to start with the rook on, on the 6th rank. Knight g2. Knight g5. Pawn to h4. Knight back to e6. Rook d1. And. This is a typical position where Hannes Hannes Stefansson just doesn't go wrong. We'll put the pieces in good squares. I mean, here is doubling the rooks. And slowly but surely, he will eliminate any any counterplay. And he's just off the exchange. So, looks like. This rook takes e3 move was premature and really unnecessary because black had a fine position so I'm not sure why why he went for that really. I think we can more or less write off Black's chances here. We can also, yeah, like I said yesterday, Halki is notorious for his time trouble, and here he's down to 44 seconds. Plus, his position is not it's not in good shape. So, yeah, let's move on to some other games. Uh, let's go to Henrik Danielson. Who I felt like had a good ending. Yeah, a good ending. Rook d7. Rook d4. d6. And now, the pawn push finally. Pawn to b4. Bishop c7. Bishop to c5. And notice he just takes his time. And it doesn't matter if if, uh, if black exchanges the rooks. I think we can still make the pass pawn. Rook 
takes d4. He didn't play. He went actually rook d5 here, I think. That's 40, so that's okay next time. But uh, rook takes d4. Maybe just take with a bishop. I'm wondering how best to take actually maybe okay let's try this and I want to play a5 bishop c3 and then b5 a6 same plan as before and also here the problem for black is I mean like like here then uh, maybe I even start with this one Okay, at least here the king would be active, so maybe one needs to be careful. Let's start with the king, yeah. Let's start with the king. King is a good piece. Yeah, it's, it's hard for black to get active. I mean, g5 would take f4, you would take and you lose e4. And again, when the time is right, we're gonna push the pawns here on the queen side. But okay, you want rook d5. Rook c4. Long rook e3 check. King e2. Uh, was this necessary to allow this? Rook c2. So maybe black is defending this now. I um, know his rook is active, his king is. A good active square. So Hendrik needs to think about things here. Uh, okay. Maybe it took too long to just push the pawns. Push your pawn! Yeah, because now black is really active, so now it's hard to push the pawns all of a sudden, so... I'm not sure here, yeah. Okay, let's go back. <coughs> Give me against the end. Here in Stingren, Sean. Uh, bishop f5 on move 25. When we figured out that g4 was a blunder because rook takes c4, bishop takes queen takes d5. And that's what we take here. This is attacked, among other things. Uh, so after bishop f5, commit to b4, but we just take back and we take the rook. Guys, attack. King a1. <clears throat> and black can actually take on g2 and then yeah yeah you can actually just take here and then go back to e4 and then take the rook the rook isn't going anywhere but what did he do he didn't see that he went knight c5 uh bishop takes takes Bishop to g4, pawn to f5, bishop to f3, and now you have to take the exchange. I mean, he hasn't, but what choice do you really have? Uh, Kim is down to 49 seconds, here then 4 minutes. I mean, he has to take, we can just put it on the board. And black will be up a pawn. Okay, we have opposite colored bishops, uh, strong on d5, but okay, black will d5 square also. So I think uh, the most important thing here is <coughs> the extra pawn for black. Which I didn't quite understand why it could be allowed. Didn't seem to have to, to do that. Uh, thruster, we just liked in this game. Uh, thrust is down to 17 seconds against 9 minutes. Uh, with rook d5 here. 
And I thought it was too early for this, but now h5, g takes, queen takes. It's time to look rather weak for white here, knight g5 and knight g3. Um, yeah. Okay, queen h6 or queen h4. Queen h4 looks more natural somehow. Uh, but was uh, thinking, eight minutes left. Six. Black seems to have everything under control here. I mean, now this knight is on g5, now the other knight can move to f4 maybe. Pressure on h3. So, like if we play queen h4. This pressure on h3 is rather, rather tricky. He played queen h4. <coughs> queen d1 quickly because, well, he didn't have much time. Now, the knight jump to e6 actually makes a lot of sense. Black has to calculate some things. I mean, you're starting to get out some pawns, so you have to you have to be sure here. You might not even take because uh, actually it's, it's not even, hang even hanging on D8 because if he takes, uh, we have a check on H3, picking up a queen here. So let's see. To e6 comes into consideration here. Let's stay in this game for a few minutes. Surely looks good for black. Looks like uh, Phenomenon. So make a move, make a move. Knight C E6 on the board. He did it. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you? Oh, this is time to look really, really bad for white. All the pieces are lining up against this king. Pawns will start to drop off. Yeah, I mean, like Rook takes, uh, like I said, we, we don't even have to worry about, about E8. We might also take and play here. Another problem is we take another pawn and uh, maybe this check. Okay, probably there's something better actually, but it's just a depot here. I don't think it would. I don't think it would take actually on d6. Yeah, he actually white played d6 and he actually went knight f4. Nice move. Is not gonna miss things like this. Why to move? I mean, he's down to six seconds, so he has to find the move here. Ooh, not looking good for white. I mean, rook takes d8, rook takes d8, then we have the, the... Oh, he took on d8. I mean, it's so hard to find the move here. Because maybe you don't see an f4 immediately, and, and that d8 is not really hanging, so... Now, okay, I mean, of course you'll see that the rook on d8 can't be taken, but... 
No black isn't even. Mental material it takes on H3. Um, well, this might be game game over. Uh, well, we can put the queen on G4. No, can we? No, we can't. Queen G4. Uh, yeah, we want to mine the queen. Uh, this takes knight takes check again, and then we take the queen. So where does the queen go? Uh, it took on T. Oh my god. It didn't just. I mean, maybe it just doesn't do anything. That's that's the problem. If, if queen c2, then we take on g2. King takes, queen takes h3, and it's made. So maybe it just didn't have a choice. And now this game, this game is just over now. Queen takes d8. He's gonna take on h3. He's gonna reach the time control in two moves, so won't be any complications here whatsoever. Maybe he takes h3, which will take, he will take the queen. <clears throat> and okay, you have to save this bishop, but then we're going to pick up some more pawns here. I mean, the rook doesn't stand well here, and we can pick up some some further pawns. And this knight is still wants the piece here. Uh, it's game over. Uh, Looks like the clock is broken. It says that uh, both have 30 minutes now. So actually, the arbiters must <laughs> must have a look at the clocks because they're counting wrong. It says 39 moves, but they both got the rest of time. That happened yesterday on move 38 in one of the games. So maybe the clocks are set incorrectly. Well, okay, it doesn't really matter. He played bishop takes a3 immediately. And queen will take on d8. But uh, oh, hang on a minute. Queen takes d2 is a better move. Queen takes d2 is a much better move. And the cat say the bear d2 man. The ducker bishop. Check me. Yeah, queen takes h3 is much stronger, ends the game immediately, you can't prevent the mate. Let's see if he finds it. I mean, he has 7 minutes left. 7 minutes. He found it, so it's... Resignation time. White's gonna resign here. So, Hjörver on the board, but... A horrible start for Thruster, who starts 0 out of 2, and... Looks like he will not repeating his form from 2012 in this venue when he uh, played a fantastic solid tournament and reached reached the match for for the championship and and won it for the first time. But uh, starting all out of two in this tough field will not enable him to uh, repeat that performance. I can almost guarantee that, but. Let's hope he bounces back and finishes the tournament, but, but this game is over, no doubt. So let's just jump on to some other games. <coughs> yeah, let's see what happened in uh, Bryce's game. We thought White would slowly but surely improve, and the plan is... Yeah, I mean, we saw this plan before. We protected this king e2, king d7, king d2, b8. A very logical play. You want to uh, protect the b2 square so you can activate your bishop without allowing the black rook in. Let the right one in. The summer. Rook h8. Rook g1. Might see six. Rook g1. I'm wondering if Black is thinking about. If he was thinking about the move like h6 or h5. I think either way, White must must take it. Uh,
probably rook g3 for uh, you know attacking the pawn. But the question is if black can hold this. Maybe long term. Well, hang on a minute. Yeah, rook g3. Now we're threatening f5. So probably rook move somewhere. Maybe here. But he went knight c6. He didn't want to take. Uh, he's playing on the increment, so he didn't want to take any chances here, I guess. And calculate. Uh, Einar has one minute. He went rook g3. Um, so, Hannes is actually a one already. Gummi here then might be the most. Let's move over to. Uh, because this one is, is moving along slowly, let's move on, over to uh, Gummi and here then. First board, we had 31 rook takes d3. Sorry, bishop takes d3, queen takes d3. We had rook e8, h5, queen into f2, queen to d1, queen back to c5. So, some time trouble here. Takes on g6, queen to b3. What? Yeah, what? 8, 4, h5 was a good plan. Because you're weak enough. H5 is on this diagonal, so black has to watch out here. Queen b3, but king f8. Maybe knight f4, threatening on g6. He actually went knight c7. Now we we'll think about knight e6, so it might be. Hang on a minute, knight f4 was plus 2, man. Ooh. It looks just threatening this guy. It's actually mate, so if you if black has a brain part here, it's, it's checkmate 1. So, missed his chance here, but knight c7 also looks good. It looks like Kuma is turning this game around completely. Knight d4. Okay, tactical move. Now the knight hangs. To d7. Knight c2. King d1. Knight a3. B takes a3. Queen takes c3. So black has sacrificed the piece, but that's that's a heavy, that's some heavy artillery coming down the long diagonal. Knight takes e8. Queen d3, and maybe they reach the time control. I'm wondering if we just have a, a perpetual check here. It's starting to look like it. But yeah, they were in severe time trouble, and looks like. Might miss this chance. We go back. Yeah, knight c7 a lot, knight d4. So his chance was instead of knight c7, knight f4. It looks like it. But maybe, maybe black can find the defense here. I'm not sure. Knight d5. Okay, we come in the exchange here with 96, that's one idea. Um, maybe we can take a b7 as well. I mean, Black has to be careful here. I mean, if, if he doesn't take the bishop, we might play bishop d5. Some mate threats. B7, I mean. But when you take the bishop, then uh, your pawns become really weak. So now the only question is if, uh, if this is perpetual here. But actually, we have rook c1 here, so. Black has to be careful. So it looks like he missed his chance, but instead, after this exchange here with knight d4, uh, this nice resource, knight a3, I have a feeling this is perpetual check. Yeah. Looks like it. And Well, there is, there is time control, so I can take the time here. But Looks like it's just a draw here. Uh, 
Stefansson against Gretelsson. This game is finished. Thirty queen d three. He actually took the queen. Rook takes d three. Rook into c two. Rook three to d two. Knight takes d four and rook takes c two. And after this, he resigned because well, the simplification is in White's favor of the exchange. We pawn here. We're gonna drop off. No way to fight for black. So a nice win for for Stefansson who moves on to two out of two, grabs the lead. And I think he will be the sole leader after this round because Raye, the only one who can catch him, is currently defending. Let's actually move on to his game again. So, rook g3. And they reached the time control as well. Bishop f8 was played. Bishop e3. h6. h4. Hg, Hg, another rook, black rook penetrates, rook h2. Yeah, so black did the right thing by being the first to the h file, otherwise, white would have taken it over. Um, so maybe it's, it's not so easy to make any progress here. Maybe black would be able to, to hold the position. And of course, this is just horrible, no prospects, but why can't really, uh, it's hard for him to win any material here, so I have a feeling there's, I have a feeling there's no progress to be made, so we'll see. He might play a long game, I mean, maybe White will, uh, some point try to exchange rooks, but no, 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 you can't do anything there. Yeah, I'm sticking to it. Uh, draw here, I don't see any progress. Bishop d2, so do we have anything exciting or are things just clearing up? Gummi and Kieden is looking like a draw. First to Hero is already over after Queen takes h3. Einar and Bray is looking like a draw. Hannes against uh, Helgi already finished. So it's Henrik against uh, against Gisla, which is perhaps the most interesting of, of the games we have left. I might actually uh, throw up a game from the challengers, which is quite interesting if. Uh, now that things have uh, cleared up a bit, let's see if it, it's still going on. So that games, uh, round two challengers. We have the young uh, Vigner Vatnar playing against Fide Master Sigurd Dallesifusson, second seed in the challengers. And yeah, earlier it was looking like an interesting game, but and even better for white here according to the computer. But now it has actually uh, yeah, looking completely winning for black all of a sudden. So yeah, I thought when uh, I, had, I had a chance to check the game out briefly, and I thought thought it looked quite interesting. But uh, alas. Uh, Nothing happened really. Yeah, we should mention that uh, the challengers group uh, also doubles as the Icelandic Women's Chess Championship. Uh, so the top placed woman in, in the challengers will become the women's champion of Iceland. 
Um, let me go edit this. Edit. Okay. So yeah, unfortunately no interesting games left in the challenges group unless Olenka is still playing, but I think she had an overwhelming position. And quick look here. Lenka Patasenkova, the highest rated Atlantic woman, and the likely winner. Well, actually, we have an interesting position, and let's just uh, have a look at this game. Uh, since things are quieting down a bit in uh, the Masters group, let's just have a quick look at this game. Let's look at. So this is uh, Lenka with white and Inquirer Bergson, he has the same name as me, the black pieces, and we had the Slav, d5, b3. Okay, always a solid way to play with b3 if you don't want to sacrifice a pawn, you just want to play a solid system. Seems like black is employing the London system. At some point you have to play h6 here for black. You have to play h6 here for black. Bishop b2, you have to play h6 for black. Let's be c5. And h6, there you go, there you go. You have to play this move to get a square for your bishop. On h7. So, uh, white castle, castle. So this is just a standard ready opening. Twenty seven, knight one, onto a five. Yeah, black solidly here. Uh, a three. Yeah, knight b one was to uh, play a three, but usually we're playing. Yeah, rook c one. Hmm. Mm. Usually white plays a3, bishop c3, queen c2 to b2, standard maneuver here, but rook c1 this looks a bit artificial, unless it's uh, something completely clever, but let's see, bishop h7, queen to d2, rook f, into c8, Um, where am I? Rook f to c8, rook to c2, bishop to c6, and now I think uh, it looks like Lenka was starting to take over here. It turns out that I can play knight c5 here. White has to play queen c3 to, to play this pawn. Knight right, 4 b4, she put the knight on b3, which she does. This actually looks better for black here, c5. Uh, did he miss his chance here? He played bishop c7. But... I'm confused. I guess... White just gets two pawns, is that the idea? Take c1, takes, 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 takes. That's a lot of pawns. Yeah, that's the idea. Okay, I mean, it's still not clear, but I could have done that. Steady with bishop c7. And rook d1, saving the rook, rook d8. E3, E7, and okay, I thought knight D2 takes. I thought white was going to do well here. But actually, it's not that big of a plus, but that's what I thought 98, H4, H5, Rook E2. I think around here I saw the position I thought what was the well, bishop h3 
go to d8, make d4. So I test this. Okay, nice setup here, which could uh, break out at any minute, you know. Once white goes for any kind of pawn break, then uh, the pieces will make sense. But for now, it's a bit restrained. Uh, knight jumps into e6, move to c8. And she takes on c7. Okay. We'll take c7, e4, and e4. So, yeah, before the computer thought white was doing well, but now black is. should be doing well because, well, we closed down this, uh, this battery here, which was one of white's main long term trumps. And now black goes for, for an attack here, g5, correct decision. b5, and g4, I'm not sure about. Yeah, why. why uh, Why well, lose the flexibility immediately here on the queen side? Maybe uh, uh, king side. Maybe you know double on the f file. Bishop f5, exchange this bishop, then you can play h4. But g4, you only have one plan. You know, get the knight to g5 and jump to f3. And that takes some time. So g4, bishop f1. Goes right ahead, knight g7, queen e1. Knight e6, well played by black. Bishop c3. Knight g5. Bishop e2 and h4. Looks like black is playing quite well here. We might have the first real upset of uh, the challengers group. Uh, rook b1, knight f3 check. Wow, bishop takes f3 and g takes f3. e takes f3 looks completely winning for, for black. Opening up the diagonal for the bishop and Winning the exchange and, and you just keep the 8th pawn and you can take on g3. Move the queen over at some point and mid threats on, on the 8th file. And uh, g2. But he took with uh, the g pawn. Rook b2. Okay, bishop f5. You, um, I see you said the a wants to put the bishop on g2 and then turns with the queen to h3. Queen f1, queen e6, okay, good idea. But king f2, now he's stopping this idea, so uh, she is, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Lenka. But still completely winning, h takes g3, and then no. Uh, and then queen check. Went rook h7 first, but now white can sacrifice a pawn. And close it, oh. Yeah, good moment here. Black has to. Take on g3. Open up the files, very important. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. This is completely over. You take with a pawn, there's a check. And hello, pawn, check. 3 is the correct move, uh, g3. But instead, you want to look at 7. And now we can sacrifice this g pawn and keep the h file closed. Very important, so maybe she can defend now. Bishop takes c4, e takes c6, queen takes c6, rook b6, and c7, Czechoslovakia, which is where Lenka is originally from, <laughs> queen d8, rook g6, check, rook g7, takes, takes, and now. Lenka has survived, and now she can start thinking about. She reached the time control. Uh, yeah, longer. It's more 48, so queen b5. They both have about 11 minutes left. So queen b5. Let's take stock here. Black is still up a pawn. But this pawn is attacked. This pawn is weak. This pawn might be weak. And in some cases, rook g1 pins the bishop and could be annoying for black. So looks like Lenka might survive here, but that for sure was a big scare. Uh. 
Uh, I have a question. Is that Captain Mark in the background? How do you know Captain Mark, Mr. Ray? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay, so uh, Lenka might survive. Uh, again, Lenka is 2200. I think Inqua is around 1900. Ray Finkel says, I saw him at the Open Congress in Scotland. Okay, so uh, I thought this game was interesting because, well, it, it would have been the uh, first upset in the in the challengers if uh, Inker had managed to finish it off, but he couldn't. So let's go on to the to the masters. And let's see uh, if uh, Henrik Danielsson is making any any progress. Let's see if there's any progress made by, by Henrik, the endgame expert. Yeah, it is one uh pause button stash chest and uh <laughs> That's my Henrik impression. Yeah, yeah I played A5 and uh it's a good move. I want to push the pause on the queen side. You make a pass pawn. It's C3. Somehow there was a mix of uh, international arbiter all around there. <laughs> yeah. <And laughs> Bishop c3, rook a2. Let's try and regain our focus here. Um, King c4. Okay. Uh, a6. Okay, so now we have a pass b pawn and the big attack on the g pawn. Rook d2 check. King f1, black gets the b pawn, but he's gonna lose the g pawn. Let's see what happens. This is on the board, king will take, and white will take on g6. He's gonna get one more pawn, so he's gonna be up a pawn. And some of the black pawns are weak. Uh, so now the question is, is the rook ending winning? Rook takes t6 is on the board. Black should probably uh, improve his king. And then that will play rook g5. Uh, most likely we need this f pawn, so this will probably happen. We could even start with king e2 here, potentially. Let's start with king e2. Let's say king d4, rook takes h5. King e5 probably. No, King E5 lost G4, so Black has to be careful. So maybe King E4 is not a good move. Maybe King C5 to, to well, but then the White King might penetrate. So maybe some problems for Black here. Uh, what takes Jesus is on the board. Black is thinking. Black is thinking. What are you thinking about? I think there are definitely some chances for for white here. He's going to be up a pawn. He's going to have a pass pawn, and more importantly, there's going to be a weak pawn for black and some problems in in coordinating his, his pieces because in the variation we looked at. Okay, let's move the king. Rook g5. Rook king e2 first. If the king goes here, let's do that. Rook takes. We can't do this. We win another pawn. And note that, uh, yeah, the, uh, the this is completely winning from it. Just got king e3, we push the eighth pawn, and we're gonna get the opposition. So we can't do that, and if we go the other way, uh, then we have to watch out for maybe the king reaching the f4. Which could be a problem. Because then we get to, let, let's say, this. Let's say we swing around and then try and move this pawn. 
Let me see if we can stock. And if you try to go for counter play, we get two pawns. Now we have two connected pass pawns, and that's gonna be winning. And, and like like I mentioned many times, Henrik is is very good in end games. He uh, he's focused a lot on them, so him winning here wouldn't surprise me. We have a question after rook takes g6. Can we play king c3 with the idea of rook d1 check, king g2, rook d2, threatening e3 to get a draw? The idea of rook here is to, uh, well, have the rook protected on d2, okay? If I start with the rook check, well, then I haven't won a pawn yet, so you can just go here. That's correct. So if you try and win a pawn, you want to go check and back here and you want to threaten e3. So now the question is if we're in time for this. Uh, sorry, it's going to be here, of course. And the question is probably no. Or are we? <laughs> King f3. I did not see this king f3 idea. I mean, black was threatening to rook here. So I'm more like this. Uh, just loses because here. And then we make a queen. And the king should be in time. But uh, king f3 might be a, a winning idea here. Okay, yeah, so that's the most concrete line in, in, in this case. King g3, rook g5, uh, sorry, not this one, rook g5, going back, rook g5, rook g1 check, king g2, the black side is 3 so we're wondering if we can just take on h5, and f3, take on f5, f3, 2, we stop the pawn in its tracks, and the king g3, simply king f3. And now we just want to push our pawns, and the thing is, go here because we just capture the pawn we do. So potentially, a winning idea for white against this is counterplay. Got a nice idea. Uh, we have some moves on the board, so let's go back to rook takes g6, which was played. He played uh, king c4, which was most natural oh there's only one move <laughs> king c4 and rook g5 cancel king c4 rook g5 yeah one idea here that we didn't look at is f4 which might be the best move he hasn't played it but Trying to break up white's pawns because your worst case scenario is white getting uh, connected past pawns. And in this case, if white takes, okay, he will have two pawns, but at least the pawns are broken down. But I have a feeling this is uh, going to be quite difficult because the black king is cut off. So I'm not even sure that f4 is the best move. So we have uh, two games remaining, three results, two of them decisive. Uh, the other game left is uh, Jensen against Thor, uh, Thorfinnsson, where I thought there was actually no progress to be made. So maybe a quick look at that one again, see what's going on there. Forty-two bishop d2. We actually have a bunch of moves. Bishop d7, but the character of the position hasn't changed much. Knight to a5. Rook b1. Pawn to a6, preventing rook to b5. Why not? Rook back to e1. 
This might go on for a while because white can move a lot back and forth. Rook e2. Black decides to keep the rooks on. Rook back to e1. Rook back to h2. Repeating to gain time. The clock. Now bishop c1. The idea is not for white to get a draw. The draw he just wants to get time on the clock. King c7. Rook f2. Rook h3. It seems to me that white is a little bit playing his pieces back and forth to uh, trying to figure out the best configuration of pieces. Actually, this one makes some sense. Uh, the bishop is covering. Both the bishops are covering the most important pawns here. But okay, after this, he goes back to d3. I'm not sure how white is going to make progress here. Maybe he wants to uh, now walk his king. I think to make progress you have to exchange rooks. So now maybe it's time for another plan. Walk the king over to e1. And play rook to h3. But after you exchange the rooks, what's your uh, what's your big plan? You need the bishop on f1 to cover c4. Yeah, I don't see any. Okay, let's just uh, uh, bishop b3 with black to move. Let's just go for a back and forth plan for black. Let's say, okay, if rook h2, we can play bishop back 2 probably. So back and forth. And eventually rook h3. And no, okay, we can't even do that. Can't even do that because this will hang. That was a flawed plan, so maybe uh, bishop f2, bishop e7. Okay, we have to go a longer route. We have to go to h4. Yeah, we can do that. Look h4, and now we have to take. So now we finally got the exchange of rooks, but again, how to penetrate. I don't actually see it, but uh, there might be uh, some breakthrough ideas with f5. Uh, but this is so hard to. So hard to execute them. So, the first plan is maybe to uh, bring the king over to the queen side. The problem with this plan, to me, is that. The king can't go any further. We can't add any attackers to the to the knight to the pawn. So, uh, how to proceed from here? We could uh, another plan is let's let's put the king on e three instead and, and protect this pawn. What's the idea with that? We want to reroute our bishop. Bishop d1. And now black has to be careful. Uh, can't allow bishop e8. So either king d8 and continue with our back and forth plan here, which actually looks like it's okay. I mean, can white do anything while we just go back and forth? I don't see it. If the bishop moves away, it goes back, and we just bring the king back, and we're ready to meet. King to a4 with uh, king to b6. So the only idea is f5 at some stage, but it's hard to organize. My thing is, it should be a draw. We actually have 54 bishop d2. Less as in the Bishop f1, rook h1, bishop e3, bishop f8. <laughs> look! 
Nu ochi eu eu! Deci, bă, vedeți, where are we? King D3? Da, nu mai nu King D3. Bishop E7 and Bishop to G2. So now we free the bishop from protecting this pawn. But how to make progress? I still don't see anything. Yeah, I think still it should be a draw. Um, you got going Vienna. Probably take it. And he's tainted. So is the It looks like like we say in Iceland, stone dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is completely completely drawn. So yeah, okay. The end came with uh Kumikala. Yeah, Kumik uh Kumikata, you should have played Nara four. Yes. It was pretty upset. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. So rook g5. Actually, played a4. G takes a4, and rook d3. Rook d3. Yeah, no it Looks good for white. I agree, but um, rook takes h5. Rook f3. Aha! Aha! Problematic. Another question is: Can we take on e4? Probably the king is too cut off, and we just win here. I think they should be winning. The king cut off like this. It's way out of the game. So, so hundred to move. So it looks like things are quieting down. I'll take a short break and a walk, and probably will not go on for long after that, but maybe half an hour or something. So, just a quick break right now.
Ne. Okay, so just went into the hall to to see the players and Henrik actually looks quite relaxed and uh, 53 rook takes h5 was played like we well makes makes sense uh, rook f3 king e2 uh, king went to d4 it didn't go for the rook it takes f4 it, uh, it just looked lost king e3 and, and the king is cut off so he tried king d4 that's the current Position now uh, with rook f5, rook h3, and h5. Looking quite good for white, should be able to change this game. H5, rook H4. Okay, trying to uh, tie the the white rook down a bit here to so, to defense of, of both the pawns. But uh, yeah, actually. How to improve? Maybe just bring the king over to g2 and g3. King f1. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a rather easy plan. And once you uh, block us off here, we go here. And I go back, but now we advance further. And now again, we're trying to come to g2. And this f pawn does a good job actually of, of shielding the king away from the rook, so we can keep this formation and advance further. So uh, it's starting to look actually completely winning for white. It did play king f1, and I don't see how. Black uh, defense here, unless I'm missing some key idea. He went e3. This we have to take. Yeah, it's just game over. F takes e3 check. This has been played. It's on board. See if we have okay. King takes e3, uh, simply king g2. Problem for black is he can't take because all well, the king is behind the pawn. He lose now that the king is coming. And probably if king e4, do we have time for king g3. Looks like uh, if rook h1, we, we uh, kick the king away and then it's completely over. So. Yeah. Okay, rook g4 check. King h3 should be played. And if king f3, can we? Uh, 
Aha, the comp thinks we can just uh, after king of three, we just play g5. But is it correct? H6, what does I'm not taking king for? Of course, the computer is right. <laughs> Let's see, king of three, king of three. This has been played. So I'm curious to see what he plays here. Because, yeah, you have to be careful now. If, if h6, then this move. No, no, this move actually. Then we start checking or something. Okay, we can, I mean, he has to go to h1. Wondering if we have time to just pick up this pawn, and now we're in time. So, maybe in this position, black has to, uh, white has to watch out. King h3, king f3. But white does have 31 minutes, black has only 2 minutes. Rook g5 looks like the only move according to the computer. Looks like other moves might draw or close to it. So rook g5 must be played. So let's keep an eye on this position and then go back to Reina uh, against Rey, which also looks. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, this one looks like what should win, the other one it looks like it should be a draw. Draw? So, Henrik's still thinking he might actually cut here a bit here because I mean, he has plenty of time and he can't go wrong here, so he has to be sure. So, we're gonna look at Einar against Braille. Which has actually bishop d2, rook d1 check was played. d2, rook takes, bishop takes, bishop f8, bishop f3, bishop f7, and fourth, I mean, come on, why not? 59, bishop a4, king d8, like we said, bishop e3, bishop e7, and bishop d2, and White, yeah, gave up on trying to win this game, and I don't think there's any way to do it. So a draw was agreed. So this means we only have one game left. Danielsen against Gislason. Oh my goodness, he played eight six. He played h6, which might possibly throw the win away. Rook g6. And Henrik will be absolutely disgusted if uh, if this is the case here. And I can't believe he played it so quickly. He played h6 when he has 31 minutes left and he didn't spend much time on h6. Let's have a look. Rook g5. Rook takes f4, on to h6. The difference now is that we get behind the pawn. You have to go here. And now we can just uh, give a check here, probably. Let's see. What does the king reach? The pawn. Here, 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 here. I think this is winning. We play king h6 and then rook check. Well, let's see, um, what can we do really? King h6 and then rook check is coming. Followed by king g7. No, 
King here, I'll work here, I'm sorry. The king here. Ah, but we can make a soup run. This one. G7 and now we're running rook G8. Again, unless I'm missing something. Rook G8 move and we'll win. And yeah, the key edge so the king is cut off. Let's look at that again. Uh G5 rook takes. H6, I mean rook f6, what else really? Rook h5, we have to get behind the pawn. Now rook check. Maybe even... Maybe this might be a simpler move actually. King here, now we just walk the king to g7. So completely winning as well, so in many ways to win it, but... I think this last one is, is the most simple. So rook g5 for this reason looks not really winning. h6, which was played, allows rook g6, and now rook h5, which is on the board. And now he gave this check, and now we can push the king actually to h1. There's nothing else because we give perpetual on these squares. King goes to h1, rook g8. Oh wow, this is. But now the king is completely in time. If you play h7 here, king here, king here, or is it in time? King h3. King h3. Well, I hate to contradict the computer because it's. Ah, yeah, king h2, maybe this move first. Uh, no, rook here. Takes. And now the king is in time. There's nothing. And I mean, okay, it has to be a drop because the computer is at 26 ply now. It says 0, 0, 0. So this is an unbelievable turnaround and pretty bad by, uh, by Henry not to use his time better in, in this critical position. This is almost a study like safe because with the perpetual on, on g2 to g4 the king has to go to h1 which stands quite badly and black is just in time to pick up the pawns here and win. So this looks forced, I mean, doesn't seem to be anything else, uh, no, 8-7 here, 5 doesn't make a difference, just king g4, so king h2, king g4, a key move, otherwise we lose, we get suk swung here, and the white king approaches. But instead king g4 is the king move. Attacking the rook, which has to keep an eye on the h pawn. King takes f4, king h3, and king g5. The next time king will come here, pick up the pawn, draw a greet. And Tendrick will not be happy with this. This is not acceptable. It's just a tough tournament. Um. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's just nothing in it anymore. I mean, it's just going to be wrong. Just going to be a draw here. Henrik is thinking in, uh, in this position, but. And then we're done.
So, uh, yeah, we will have a draw in this game. Uh, disappointing uh, result for for Henrik. Um, Very disappointing. Uh, Stefansson moves to two out of two. Hjörvar is on the board with one and a half after beating uh, Thoralsson. Then we have uh, a draw in Gummi Kjartans against Hjeden. And Gummi should have, should have found a win there. But a uh, lot of perpetual. Inner Hjart and Brian was also drawn. So that's how things stand at the moment. Uh, tomorrow we'll start at around at one o'clock local time as well. Uh, that's uh, four hours and thirty minutes from now. Uh, difference. We started uh, four and a half hours ago, so we'll start at the same time tomorrow on, on the weekend rounds. Round, but yeah, the broadcast maybe half an hour or three quarters after the start of the round so i'm actually going to end this uh don't think there's anything to play for and it's going to be a draw and also the challengers game uh, has finished lenka and inquire was a draw first uh, mini upset in that tournament and yeah that's that and, uh, i hope to Hope to see you tomorrow. So thanks. Bye-bye.